That was Jonas Sterner on the piano, playing that beautiful uh, prelude. Thank you, Jonas. Um, you might have noticed some beautiful flowers up here today. They are the glory of God in honor of Violet Smith, who had her 90th birthday. And you thought she was such a youngster. I know, she's, she's deceiving in that way. Yes, let's have an applause for her. And she had a wonderful celebration with her family on October 22nd. So Jonas, you have another prelude, don't you? Would you play that, sir? Card sent. Mm -hmm. I didn't get our card sent. Well, if you need it sent, it's in there. Well, it was, you had it almost write. ready. You needed the stamp, put it on the counter so somebody can take it out. I didn't get the turn address. Down uh -huh. at the cross the turn of where my Savior died. I've done it away. <laughs> Down where <laughs> the cleansing <laughs> from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to
And now our worship leaders, Melissa Ann Stein and Maggie Sterner are coming up to the microphone to lead us in the call to worship. Welcome to St. Jacob Stone United Church of Christ. We are happy that you are here. If it is the first time that you have entered our church, we hope that you have already been greeted and made to feel at home. We value your presence. If you have been here all your life, we thank you for being so th faithful as we worship God together. Today in our worship service, we will consider the people that make ca can make amazing transformations through their faith. It is happening all around us, but we may not see it because we are not sure where to look. Also, we will be exploring the way that Christ changes us simply through his love and acceptance to become what we were always meant to be. We worship, we gather to worship the God of many blessings. a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you had me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. There at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, who has washed the world Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Oh, my God. 
come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, sometimes we are a disconnected people. We see others and they seem so far apart. People who we'd like to be close to. And sometimes, Lord, it is you that seems, as the hymn said, on the other side of the chasm, where you might have us in your sight, but we feel so far from you. We thank you, Lord, that you, when we seem so far away, you reach out to us. We don't have to climb the ladder to heaven. You've reached down and lifted us up and forgiven our sins and give us new life. It's so important in this day and age, we know that we stay connected and stay connected with your word and your truth and your hope. We are so glad that we're here not only for those attending in the sanctuary, but those who are listening to the service over the telephone conference call, and those who are also on Zoom. It's amazing we can do this to reach out to so many different folks. And dear Lord, we are so grateful that this week on Tuesday, the folks from Comcast came and connected us up to the internet because it was so difficult sometimes. The internet would just drop out when we were doing over the cell phones and people would wonder if they were connected and hopefully that glitch has now been repaired. Dear Lord, today is our crop walk and it's an individual one to be sure that some people in our church are, are walking on this walk and they're going to be collecting money to, to help those in need in our community and in other parts of the world. And they're going to ask, her, ask us to sponsor them so much a mile. We pray that we will make this commitment. We pray that we will either walk or sponsor or do both. And that we can make such a difference for those who are hungry and in need. Dear Lord, we thank you that you give us this thing called grace, this undeserved forgiveness, this love that you pour out into us so that no matter who we are or what our life has been like, for our particular condition in that life, you were there for us and you've forgiven us and loved us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now I think we have a prayer list coming up. Let's see. Yes, we do. Uh, today we're going to do the prayer list a little differently. We're going to be doing today's section, Sunday, and then we're going to do the list of those who have died and then towards the end of the service, after the last hymn, we're going to finish up the prayer list. And Mindy and, I'm sorry, <laughs> Melissa and uh, 
Maggie, right? You're Maggie. Yes, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna lead us in the prayer list. Angela Cox, Regents Crone, Brenda and Steve Forbes, Christine Grimm, Chip Hoover, Kelly Noble, Andy Parks, Nancy Nancy and Frank Creed, Jen. Gina Reeves, Dean Rohrbaugh, Gordon Shu, Reverend Charles Strasbaugh, Matt Strevig, Reverend Le Leonard Warner. Family and friends of Gary Bankert, Richard Evitz, Tara Hellman, Darla Hoke, Julie Trump Carlos, Brian Moore, Blaine Shear, Bob Smith Sr., Bill Taylor, Violet Smith's brother, Kathleen, Cassie Strain, Dale Wolfgang, and Russell Zumbrum. Let us share together the prayer our Lord has taught us as we say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our call to offering. Your offerings can be mailed to Cindy Forbes at 5123 Simpson School Road, Spring Grove, PA, 17362. Sunday school offerings can be sent to Neil Rohrball at 800 Mangus Mill Road, Spring Grove, PA 17362. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, whether we are able to drop our offering in the offering plates at the back of the church or send them by check to Neil or to Cindy, we are grateful that we have the opportunity to give and to make a difference. Because sometimes we think we're pretty poor. We don't have that much until we realize compared to so many people in the world, we are just filthy rich. And we are also so blessed by you. Thank you for these gifts that we can share and help others in Jesus name, amen. You did not wait for me to draw near to you, but you clothed yourself with frail humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me, and I'm forever grateful to you. did not wait for me to draw near to you, but you clothed yourself with frail humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me, and I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the to you that you came to 
seek and save the lost, and I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the cross. I'm forever grateful to you. Now I think it would be a wonderful time to have a children's story. So will the children please come down forward, sit up front, uh, not sit up front, sit on the uh, altar rail there, seat, kneeler. Let's see, okay. Wow, we're all here. That's great. So let's see who's here. What, what's your name, sir? Henry. Henry. Yeah, I had to have it in the microphone, you know. That was important, yes. And your name, sir? Anthony. Yes. Maggie. Finley. Finley. So anyway, I've got a great assignment for you guys to do today, okay? I would like it if you could help me to make some faces, okay? All right, so I'll, I'll name the emotion and then you can make the face. So let's try a happy face. You wanna do a happy face first? <laughs> okay. How about a sad face? That's good, that's really good, yeah. How about a worried or an anxious face like, <gasps> Yeah, yeah, okay. Can you think of any other emotions? I've got a good idea. Okay, okay. So the reason I wanted you to make faces is because, you know, sometimes if you're wondering how people are doing, you can find out by looking at their face. Did you know that? Like sometimes if you ask somebody, how you doing? What are, what are they gonna say to you? Good. Yeah, they're going to say good, right? I mean, they could, they could be just miserable. They could be so sad. Their team could have lost a game. They might have had to go into school an extra day on Saturday. But they'll tell you, I'm good. But they're not. So what's really important to do is look into somebody's eyes. And if you look in their eyes, you can tell how they're really doing. And you know? If they look really sad or really sorrowful, then you can say, how you could, how you doing? And you know what they'll say to you? I'm doing okay. That's right. I'm doing okay. And you'll, you can say to them, well, you look pretty sad and I'm here for you if you just want to talk about it. Okay. And if they're really happy and you can say, you look really happy. Are you really happy? Yes. And you can tell, well, tell me what you're happy about because I'm so interested. And if you ask them what they're happy about, you know what they're going to do? Any idea? Be ex um, they'll, you. They'll, they'll tell you? They'll tell you, yeah, because people love to talk about their happiness. They really do. And you'll, you know, even if you don't know what to talk to somebody about, if you ask about what they're, they're thinking about, what they're going through, they'll tell you and they'll be just so glad that somebody listens. So remember that. Watch the eyes, look at the face, and, and see what's going on. That's right. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, you can go back where you are. Thank you so much for being here. And I think we have our scripture lessons coming up next, I believe. Ezekiel 36 verses... 26 through 27. I will give you a new heart and a new mind. I will take away your stubborn heart of stone. And give you an obedient heart. I will put my spirit in you. And will see to it that follow my laws and keep up the commands I have given you. Luke 19 through 1 through 10. Wait, 19 verse 1 through 10. 
Jesus and Zacchaeus. Jesus went out, went on into Jericho and was passing through. There was a chief tax collector named, there named Zacchaeus, who was rich. <clears throat> he was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was a little man and could not see Jesus because of the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, who was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, hurry down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay in your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him with great joy. All the people who saw it started grumbling. This man has gone to a guest to the home of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Listen, sir, I will give half my belongings to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to this house for day, for this man also is a descendant of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Thank you so much for that great scripture reading. That was really nice. So, it's amazing sometimes how one person can really make a difference, how they can transform a situation. And I've seen it happen all the time here. I would like you to imagine that somebody has come to the church for the first time. They may have never even been in a church before. So they're really strangers. And they're out here in the wilderness, you know, and they're wondering what kind of people inhabit these parts. And are they going to think I'm an alien from outer space or whatever? And so what happens? They come and sit in the sanctuary. And just like you always do on Sunday morning, if someone is new, you go up and talk to them and you introduce yourself and you say, hi, how are you? And where are you from? And, and after this happens four or five or six times, they get to know that this is like going back to family, right? This is like, I'm part of a part of a gang. I feel so welcomed here. And by your love and caring, you change a place that might feel very alien into one that feels just like home. It's amazing how people can do that. I've got another story for you. When I was first a pastor back in Connecticut, I know I've told a few of these back in Connecticut stories, but long time ago, this is probably 35 years ago, uh, we had a church meeting, a congregational meeting after the service of worship. And there was this woman who, whose name we'll say was Edna, and Edna was very upset because she had walked into church that Sunday and it was really cold. Can you identify with her right now, by the way? <laughs> it was really cold. And she said, you know, I came into church this morning and it was freezing. You know, some of us are getting to be older people and we could get a cold or something, which isn't true, but that's what she went on and said. And she got more angry the more she talked. You notice some people are like that. They start out a little angry. And then the more they talk about it, the more angry they get. And that's the way Edna was. She was just getting more and more angry. And finally, she says, what is the matter with the trustees in this church anyway? Don't they know how to turn on the thermostat? Don't they know what to do? And uh, as you imagine, everybody was on edge, but even more so than you can imagine, because living with Edna around, although she could be a very nice and kind person, was like living next to Mount St. Helens when it's starting to smoke, you know? You know it's going to blow and the explosion is going to be ugly and everybody's going to get caught in the fallout and no one wanted to go through that. Well, that's what was happening. She was just getting more excited, more angry. Finally, this man by the name of Jim Rittenhouse spoke up and he said, well, Edna, I think I'm the one that forgot to turn the thermostat up this morning, although it could have been anybody. It was such a beautiful morning when I got up. I just assumed that it must be really warm out because the sun was out. But you know, Edna, I really have to thank you 
because you made my wife, Charlotte, a beautiful sweater for Christmas last year, and she really needed it this morning. So thank you so much. And with that, what was Edna going to do? He had confessed that he was the one that left the thermostat down, although, as I said, it could have been most of us to turn it up. But he also turned it into a little bit of humor, complimenting Edna on the fact that she had made his wife a sweater for Christmas, and it kept her warm. And so everybody suddenly started to relax. Instead of the major explosion that we had thought was going to happen, Jim had just calmed everybody down. It's amazing how one person can transform so many others. Well, of course, there's a great story in the Bible about this. It all happens when Jesus one day comes home again to Capernaum, which was a city on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, which was his base of operations during his ministry. And of course, when he came home, everybody wanted to see him. Some wanted to come in here and preach, but many people were sick and they wanted Jesus to heal them. Now, among these people were four good men who had a friend who was paraplegic, he couldn't walk. And so knowing that Jesus was in town, they went and got their friend and they carried him on his stretcher, which was probably nothing more than a blanket, all the way to Jesus' house. The only problem is when they got there, the place was surrounded by people. Jesus was inside talking to folks and people were on the outside, straining their ear, wanting to hear what he was saying. And, and there were all these people who wanted Jesus to heal them. Well, of course, it was going to take for days to get there. So the men were not going to wait around. On houses in those days, they were usually just very simple one room stone houses with a, a roof on the top, a flat roof. There was a store, a stair going up the side of the house so that people could use the roof of the house like a deck. So they carried their friend on a stretcher all the way up to the roof of the house. And there, they were not going to be, uh, there was not gonna be an obstacle. They decided to start taking the roof apart to get down to see Jesus. Now, in those days, roofs were made of just intertwining branches with some mud on the top, but still they took the roof apart lowered the man down right in front of Jesus. It was amazing. And then what happened is Jesus says to him, he, he cases up the situation and he says, your sins are forgiven. Well, that got people grumbling. Who is this man, Jesus, who forgives sins? Only God can forgive sins. Well, Jesus knows what they're thinking. And he says to them, so that you will know that the son of man can forgive sins, or it has that authority, or to raise someone who's been sick, he says to the man, take your mat, get up and walk. And so the man gets up and walks, proving that not only could Jesus heal him, but he could forgive his sins too. And everybody is just absolutely amazed. They think they've never seen anything like it at all. So it's a nice story, but what does it have to do with us transforming people? Well, let's investigate the story a little bit more and I think we'll see. One thing that might be strange in the story to us is what does Jesus say to the man who's been lowered down through the ceiling to him first off? He says to him, your sins are forgiven. Well, why would he say that? That sounds like not even relevant. The man can't walk. We don't know that he's a sinner. Well, in those days, if you were sick or if you had an untimely accident or you couldn't walk or you were disabled, people figured you'd sinned because they assumed that God was the one that caused you to be sick or not being able to walk. And God was angry at you. And God was never angry at people just for the thrill of it. You must have done something wrong and you probably deserved it. Now, we don't think that way anymore, but in those days they did. The man who was paraplegic would have thought this. His friends who carried him to Jesus would have thought that. And the whole village would have thought the same thing. And so Jesus says to the man right off, 
your sins are forgiven because that's the issue that everybody thought had to be dealt with. And so he did. Now, what you notice the man didn't say, he didn't say to Jesus, well, why are you calling me a sinner? I mean, I'm not that bad. I'm really not a terrible person. I mean, my friend uh, George over here, you know, I mean, that guy really is a sinner if you want to see a sinner. But me, I'm really a good guy, right? Which is more what we would have done. We would have gotten all defensive because oftentimes we don't think we're really all that bad. Which is often a case to talk to your husband or wife or friends and they'll usually tell you the other way. But <laughs> nevertheless, um, but this man could just accept the fact that he wasn't perfect. And by accepting the fact that he wasn't perfect, he could let Christ in. And wouldn't it be a better world if, if we all didn't think we were perfect or good enough and accepted the fact that we were imperfect? And that way we could let God guide us and help us and show us a better way. And for this man, it was a way that he was able to accept Jesus' healing because his heart could be open to Christ for whatever the Lord wanted to do to help him. And he did that. There's something else interesting about the story. Now, I mentioned that the man in the village and even his friends thought he was a sinner. But his friends carried him all the way from his house on a stretcher to Jesus' house and then up the staircase to the roof and then opened up the roof and lowered their friend in, even though he was what it might have, they had thought in those days as a sinner. Now, I think that's a little brave if I, if I were them, because if they believed that God had cursed this man, then they might have thought that if God really got angry, that a bolt of lightning would suddenly descend from the heavens and fry this guy into a pile of ashes. And they might not just want to be exactly around it. But they helped him nevertheless. And that got me thinking of that story about Jim Rittenhouse and Edna. Remember how mean and nasty Edna was that day, even though she could be a very nice person. Jim didn't hold it against her, did he? He simply made light of it and said, yeah, I forgot to turn the thermostat up. And oh, by the way, thank you for making my wife that nice sweater that she really needed on this cold Sunday. He turned it into something positive. He could see someone who wasn't perfect and didn't get all defensive. Instead, he was just very kind. I talked to one of the members of the trustees after the meeting. And he told me what he was going to say to Edna. He was going to say, Edna, who had died and left you God after all? Do you think you're the judge of us? Do you have a right to be telling us we're not perfect? Well, you know, you're not too perfect either, especially the way you blow up like you do. I mean, do you think we just want to sit around and wait to be insulted? What's the matter with you woman anyway? Well, if he had said that, Edna would have gone nuclear. It would have been terrible, right? But Jim just accepted that that's the way Edna was and worked with her where she was. And we can do that with people too, just accepting that that's who they are and working from where they are to where they can be through our love and forgiveness. There's something else that should have happened in the story and didn't. After the meeting, I went to Jim and I thanked him for being so calm being so humorous and making light of things so everyone could just calm down. But what I didn't do is I didn't see what was going on. That experience was a God moment. God had done something to Jim's heart, softened it, poured some love in there, gave him forgiveness, allowed him not to be defensive. That doesn't always happen with people. It was a real miracle that God performed right before our eyes. And I wish I had seen it because if I did, I could have said, Jim, what you did was very godly. God was working through you because often people don't see how God is working through them. And they don't realize the grace and the help that God has been there through for them. Now, you got plenty of people in our church who 
who are doing godly things all the time, like the, the crew that's putting all those slides together for the worship service today and, and making sure the hymns come up and the songs and Jonah's working at the piano and singing and our great worship leaders here today. I mean, everybody has their part and it's all something that God gives us and all the kindness you share to people and the way you help those in need, it's all godly work. So the more we can say to someone, what you're doing is the work of the Lord, the more they're going to see that God is alive and well in the world today. It's amazing, isn't it? How one person can often change a situation. Sometimes it's by, like Jesus, like healing somebody and helping them, or sometimes like my friend Jim Rittenhouse, who just calmed everybody down when someone was really angry, or maybe like you do, by reaching out and caring or naming, you are doing God's work. And isn't it wonderful? Amen. to have the rest of that prayer list uh, going up to October 17th is I think where we're starting. A couple slides down yet. There you go. Okay. And Mindy and Mag, Mindy, Melissa and Maggie. I know I, I should know you people by now. It's been four years, right? How dare you? I know. How dare me? <laughs> go ahead. Jan Fry. Jane. Mm -hmm. Jan Fry, Jane Nace, what I mean Jane Miller, Jane Nace, Sandra Peterball, John Reed, Kim Sanders, Carol Seeley, Jean Sterner, Stephen Stiles Jr. and family, Ed Schweitzer, Ken Trump, Reverend Kurt and Jeannie, Jenny Weber, Austin. Witter, Frank Wilson. Reverend Ken e Evitz, Dwayne Henry, Ray Henry, Shirley Miller, Mary Lou and Donald Meckley, Gary Rohrball, Shirley Russell, Dwayne Trump, Richard Brett Wilkinson. Shirley Russell, Dwayne Trump, Oh, this one? Oops. Bill Forbes, Steve Forbes, Michael Hershey, Willis Miller, John Montgomery, 
Dorothy Therma Helen Helen. And those we keep in continued prayers, Gary Clapper, Dennis Falsey, Sydney Helmers, Joan Hensel, Dr. Mark Hirsch, Dolores Jones, Don Kilburn, Robert Klein, Warren Lockman, James Miller, Lisa Myers, Bob Ottstadt, George Rankin Sr., Mike Schmidt, Beverly Spite Muhammad, Kathy Rohrball, Sharon Schuller, Jacob Snyder, Summer Storm, Sherry and Kenya Taylor, Reverend David, Dr. David Stewart, COVID exposed workers, Kim Wilson and Kathy Yetter. Benediction. <laughs> May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, another in according with Jesus Christ. That together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. is strong and courageous, filled with peace. You may be seated. Just a couple of announcements before we go. Uh, collecting stamps. We are again collecting canceled stamps. There is a container in the back Sunday school room on the bookshelf, or they can be given to Betty Trump. The stamps are going to the Brethren Home at Cross Keys. Let us know if you have any questions. And uh, let's see, I wanted to sh uh, thank the tech team, which was Ray Thacker, uh, Taylor Thacker, uh, Gerald Shu, and uh, Fred Marsh was up there and Adam Marsh too. At one point, I, oh, that's right, Fred's got the clicker. He's the one that moves the slides. And thank you so much for uh, Jonas uh, at the keyboard and singing and Maggie Sterner. Finally, I got Maggie right. And Melissa Anstein, thank you so much. We're and thank you. Um, oh, yes, Bob please do. All right. Thank you. Sorry, I should have just come over here where the microphone was on. Oh, sorry. Um, this Sunday, some people are doing crop walk. Some people are doing it at a different day. I want to encourage you to find somebody who is doing crop walk and um, sponsor them. A dollar is awesome. Um, Ten dollars is awesome. Fifty dollars is awesome. Or whatever you feel that you could share. Um, I and Maggie are going to walk today while Mindy's taking care of Elijah. He's feeling sick. Um, and then I know mom and dad are going to walk at some point. Um, and who else is here that is walking? Oh, Maggie did race for education at school. Ken and Dolores Markle, you guys are walking. And Bruce, Bruce and Rita Bouchard are walking. Is there anybody else who's walking? Um, Missy and Karen Anstein. I feel like there's another name on that list that I'm missing and I can't think of who it is. But um, if you would see any of those people, if you feel that you're able to donate, that will go to a wonderful cause and help to support others. Thanks. Goodbye. Our final one on the stage. Thank you, Jonas, for mentioning the crop walk and the names are posted on the front door when you come in. Thank you so much for being here. God bless and God keep you safe and healthy. Bye. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>